Welcome to part two of the infant care kit tutorial, where we teach you how to sew a baby's gown. You'll need to make three of these. First, the bias tape. You may have received bias tape in your kit, which looks like this blue strip, in which case you can fast forward through the next couple steps. If you did not receive bias tape, but instead received strips of fabric that look like these orange strips, you'll need to make your own. There are two ways to do this. One is with a bias tape maker, and the other is without. First, we'll show you using the bias tape maker, this little tool. Feed the fabric through the tool like this, ironing it as it emerges. Now get ready, because we're going to speed it up a bit. If you want to slow down at any time, feel free to pause the video. Once the fabric is folded and pressed, fold it in half lengthwise and press again. There you have it, homemade bias tape. If you don't have this tool, you can make the bias tape by hand. To do so, just fold the strip of fabric in half lengthwise and press. Then fold each edge into the middle fold and press. Fold it in half lengthwise and press once more. For the gown, you'll need two short strips of bias tape, about 10 inches each, and a long one that's about 52 inches. Next, we'll head to the sewing machine to make French seams for the shoulder of the gown. Take the back piece of the gown and match the shoulder edge with the corresponding front piece. Since we're doing the French seam, Make sure you start with the wrong sides of the fabric together. Sew the shoulder seam using up to a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, press the seam open. Now flip the fabric over and press again. It's important to remember how much seam allowance you have when you go back to the sewing machine. You'll want to stitch just outside of where the seam allowance ends, slightly over a quarter inch. This way, the seam allowance will not peek out on the outside of the garment. Don't forget to backstitch. Remember to backstitch at the end as well. Once you finish, you should have something that looks like this. Bring it back to the ironing board, and this time you'll want to be sure to iron the fold towards the back of the gown, which is a larger piece of fabric. Head back to the sewing machine and sew the flap down in a straight line, again, towards the back of the gown. Don't forget to backstitch. Remember to backstitch at the end as well. That's a lot of stitches, but you'll end up with a beautiful French seam, which you can see here. 
Next, you're going to sew another French seam, this one on the second shoulder. We won't show you this from start to finish. Once you've finished both French seams on the shoulders, the gown will look like this. Next up, you'll hem the sleeves. Fold the edge of the sleeve to the wrong side of the fabric, about a quarter inch, and press. Fold a second time and press again. Bring the gown to the sewing machine and sew the pressed edge. Don't forget to backstitch. You will likely find it difficult to get past the French seam because it's very thick. Turn the needle manually for this part if you need to. Remember to backstitch at the end as well. Repeat these steps for the other sleeve. Once you've finished both sleeves, you can move on to the front seams of the gown. Fold the unfinished edge to the wrong side, about a quarter inch, and press. Then fold and press again. Repeat with the other side. Sew the front seams. Don't forget to backstitch. Again, try to stay near the inside of the folded edge as much as you can. Remember to backstitch at the end as well. It should look like this, a nice straight line. Next, add the bias tape to the neckline collar area. Take the long piece of bias and fold it in half. Match the center of the folded bias tape with the center at the top of the collar. Unfold the bias so the ditches of the folds are facing you. Pin it here so the edge of the bias is flush with the edge of the collar. Be sure it's not sticking out past the edge. Once you have it in the right spot, continue to pin the bias tape all along the collar. It should end up looking something like this. You should have about nine inches of bias tape hanging free. Now sew down the ditch of the bias tape in the ditch closest to the edge of the gown. Don't forget to backstitch. Remember to backstitch at the end as well. Once you've finished, you'll be able to fold the bias neatly over the edge. You may need to trim the fabric a bit to make that possible, and that's okay. Now we'll sew the folded bias in place. You may want to fold it in at the end, like we've done here. Don't forget to backstitch. Sew as straight as you can near the edge of the bias tape. It can be tricky, so just do your best. Mm -hmm. 
We used a visible thread so you can see our stitches, but try to use a thread that matches the bias tape. Remember to backstitch at the end as well. When it's finished, it should look something like this. Next, sew the two smaller pieces of bias tape shut. When it's finished, it should look something like this. Next, you'll fasten the two short pieces of bias tape to the gown. Lay your gown out like this. You'll see the tie on the front piece ends up at the underarm of the opposite side of the back. Pin the short bias tape at this point where it will meet the longer piece. It's important that the shorter piece of bias tape on the right points to the inside of the gown. The second short piece will need to match up with the other corresponding piece of the long bias tape, except this one will be pointing outwards. Pin it in place. To pin the sides, flip the fabric inside out, right sides together. When pinning the left side, make sure the tie isn't hanging towards the wrong sides. Instead, tuck it in between the two right sides, like this. Once both shorter pieces are in the right spot, pin the sides of the gown right sides together so the wrong sides are facing outwards. Sew both sides, leaving a seam allowance of up to 3 8 of an inch, large enough to fit a zigzag stitch that will be running up beside it. Don't forget to backstitch. Sew both sides, leaving a seam allowance of up to 3 8 of an inch, large enough to fit a zigzag stitch that will be running beside it. Remember to be aware of which way the short bias tape is facing. Backstitch over it as you pass it to reinforce. Remember to backstitch at the end as well. Now switch the setting to a zigzag stitch. Choose a fairly wide setting with stitches long enough so it doesn't add too much bulk to your seam. Sew a zigzag to the right of the straight stitch, careful not to go over the edge. You may need to smooth down the edge once in a while as you go. When it's finished, it should look something like this. Press the fold down towards the back. Next, sew the fold down towards the back with a straight stitch, starting at the inside of the sleeve.
backstitch the tie as you pass it. You'll end up with a stitch that should look something like this. Repeat these steps to close the seam on the other side of the gown. The last part left to sew is the bottom trim of the gown. Fold the raw edge towards the wrong side of the gown about a quarter inch and press. Fold it over a second time and press again. Now you can do the final stitch to finish off the gown. Remember to backstitch. Try to get as close to the inside folded edge as you can. When it's finished, it should look something like this. And ta-da! After finishing both gowns, you'll be finished this portion of the tutorial. Next up are t-shirts.